Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will cover 13 questions related to inventory and accounts receivable. I will provide the answers along with the detailed explanations after each question. If you haven't seen the previous episode, I highly recommend you do so. In my previous episode, I discussed different strategies for maximizing the benefits of this video. Now let's get started with the first question. The correct answer is C. Accounts receivable refers to the amounts owed to an entity by its customers, resulting from credit sales in the ordinary course of business. It represents the money expected to be collected from customers. Now let's move to the next question. The correct answer is B. The allowance method of accounting for receivables is consistent with the accrual method. It involves estimating the credit loss allowance and recognizing credit loss expenses for the period. This method ensures revenue recognition and related expenses are matched in the same accounting period. The correct answer is C. Under the allowance method, when specific accounts receivable are determined to be uncollectible, they are written off by reducing the allowance for credit losses. This write-off does not directly impact expenses, as the reduction in gross accounts receivable and the allowance are the same. Now try to solve the next question. The correct answer is B. The income statement approach estimates credit loss expense as a percentage of sales on credit. This method calculates the allowance for credit losses based on the relationship between credit losses and credit sales. The correct answer is B. The balance sheet approach determines the ending balance of the allowance for credit losses as a percentage of the ending balance of accounts receivable. This method considers the relationship between the allowance and the total accounts receivable balance. The correct answer is A. In a factoring transaction without recourse, the receivables transferred to the factor are eliminated from the seller's books. The factor assumes the risks and rewards of collection, and the seller has no further liabilities related to those receivables. B is the correct answer. One of the main reasons entities use factoring transactions is to mitigate bad debt risk. By transferring receivables to a factor, the entity shifts responsibility for collection to the factor. This reduces the likelihood of incurring losses due to non-payment by customers. This allows the entity to minimize or avoid the recognition of bad debts on its financial statements. The correct answer is C. FIFO assumes that the oldest goods purchased are the first goods sold. This means that the ending inventory consists of the most recent purchases, while the cost of goods sold includes the earliest purchases. The correct answer is A. Specific identification is appropriate for items that are not ordinarily interchangeable and have specific identification, such as items with serial numbers. It involves determining which particular items are sold, reflecting the actual physical flow of goods. B is the correct answer. The average cost method, used under the Perpetual Inventory Accounting System, requires calculating the weighted average inventory cost after each purchase. This cost is then used for every sale until the next purchase occurs. The correct answer is A. LIFO explanation, in a time of rising prices, the LIFO method assumes that the oldest goods are in the year-end inventory, while the cost of goods sold consists of the latest goods purchased. This results in the lowest year-end inventory, the highest cost of goods sold, and the lowest gross profit for LIFO. The answer to question 12 is C. Inventory management aims to maximize the inventory turnover ratio. This ratio measures how efficiently a company utilizes its inventory by calculating the number of times inventory is sold and replaced within a given period. A higher inventory turnover ratio indicates that inventory is being sold quickly, which is generally desirable as it minimizes inventory holding costs. Now let's move to the last question on this episode. The correct answer is D. Safety stock in inventory management minimizes stockouts and backorders. 
Safety stock represents extra inventory held beyond expected demand to account for uncertainties in demand and supply. It acts as a buffer to ensure sufficient stock is available to meet unexpected increases in demand or delays in supply. By maintaining safety stock, a company can reduce the risk of stockouts and backorders, which can negatively impact customer satisfaction and sales. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more CMA content.